So our next group is Innovations for Fashion and Beauty. And in this group, uh, we have um, seven staffs in that space. And they were across from material innovations, from the color pigments, and as well as hardware to um, different type of supply chain management and yeah, all sorts of different things. So now I am going to hand over to um, Elisa to kick off uh, the innovations for fashion to start with. So, oops, sorry, I will just stop sharing and I believe uh, Elisa has uh, prepared a video to share with us. Please do remember to click the share song. Over to you, Elisa. My name is Elisa Brunato, and I'm the founder of Radiant Matter. We have developed the world's first biodegradable and brilliantly glittering biosequin made from wood. Humans have forever been in awe of nature's ability to produce the brightest glittering colors on Earth. These colorful effects are called structural colors. Color is a powerful communication tool and is essential for all design. However, industries are exploiting our environment in order to create these colors using toxic pigments, plastic or metallic foils, which all have implications to human and planetary health. They also contribute to the global microplastic problem. It has not been possible to sustainably replicate nature's color phenomenon until now. At Radiant Matter, we are developing material solutions with sustainable structural color. Our materials are biodegradable, non-toxic, color fast, and pigment free. They are made from renewable carbon sequestering cellulose. Our sequins won a Mills Fabrica Innovation Award, an LVMH Sustainability Award, and we are now partnering with leading fashion brands. What is really exciting is that the metallic iridescent sheen is achieved with zero metals or minerals, such as mica and aluminium, offering a sustainable and ethical supply chain. We are also receiving demand across other industries, from cosmetics, interior paints, and multinational automotive companies. This is a scalable, global, and cost-competitive solution. Consumers and brands are increasingly looking to be planet positive. The demand will see the next generation of materials become a global wholesale market of 2.2 billion by 2026. We are seeking investment and support to grow our team, scale up our business, and explore new markets. Join us as we redefine the way we make brilliantly colored materials. Great. Well, thank you very much, Elisa, for sharing with us. Even though uh, I think uh, maybe it's maybe it's my laptop, maybe it's my internet. Um, it's a uh, it's a uh, slowly slower like uh, image wise with uh, versus uh, the 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 song, but at least uh, it's very clear explained what your innovation is about as well as I think it does give us a really good kind of. Uh, first view about how it looks. So a very exciting space. And previously we did have um, some innovators who were trying to tackle this space. And I think you will successfully um, make it a reality. We look forward to see uh, more sustainable materials um, in this space. So next one um, would be um, Anna from Seeds of Colors. And it's a very similar, but different. So Anna is going to share with you about their biotech company, how they create pig color pigments as well from the green waste. Anna, please feel free to share screen and the floor is yours. Hi everyone, thanks Viola. So we are Seeds of Color. We are a green biotech company on a mission to celebrate nature. So for us, it's all about connecting nature with ourselves. So from nature beauties to ours. We know color pigment production is pollutive and harmful. So really pigments nowadays, they either come from minerals, crushing insects, chemicals. So they are really pollutive. So what we have is a new innovative circular technology that combines science and nature to create, to extract color pigments from local food waste. So we're based in Cambridge. And again, our output is very simple, you know, resin, um, wasted fruit and alcohol. And the output is all kind of, you know, restorative. So pigment, pulp, juice, 
alcohol and the resin that is reused. So a completely circular um, process. So we, with that, we create nutrient-rich color pigments. So again, the pigments are really full of antioxidants and the antioxidants are great for the skin. So it's a pigment that comes with skin benefits. And this is why we decided to create our first application. So we are turning green waste into pigments for color cosmetics. So we launched the multi-use plant-based color balm and um, it's 21 pounds. It's on sale on our website and selected eco shops. And we have four different colors, red berry, true nude, rose pink, and uh, warm caramel. So we're targeting Gen Z and millennials. We know they have eco lifestyles. They want to be connected with nature. They are very sustainable in terms of their beauty routine. They want fewer products, hardworking products, and they're all about you know, self-care and self-expression. The market, the global beauty market is huge. We're talking about 220 billion, the UK natural market, 5.6 billion. And we know all of this is growing, um, fueled by the rise in sustainable you know, products. Um, in terms of our you know, first achievements, I won't dwell a lot, but this has gone from you know, lab to you know, manufacturing. Uh, we launched beginning of the year, we're certified vegan, made in UK, cruelty free. B Corp, and we just um, won the Marie Claire Sustainable Awards for Best uh, Sustainable Makeup beginning of this, a few weeks ago. Our team is very complimentary. So I'm coming from brand and, and marketing. Dr. Steve Taylor is the scientist behind the brand, the big brain uh, that created the pigment. And we also work with um, makeup artists that is um, only focusing on you know, sustainable products. So we really would like you to join us on turning waste into want. Uh, we are fundraising and I'll be delighted to share more details and talk about the, the financials and the ask. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Right, so um, we are very on time <laughs> and I'll, I'm going to invite our next um, uh, pitch. It's also in the beauty space. And this time we are going from, you know, the color pigment, the uh, biotech side, all the way to the hardware. So Bella, if you are ready, please uh, unmute yourself and share the screen. If you are sharing video, please remember to click the share songs. Thank you. Hi there, thank you, Viola. Um, it's lovely to meet you all, and I'm going to play you a little clip. Um, I hope it works. Uh, let me know if you can all see it. Yep, it's up now. Yep, okay, thank you. Infections from dirty makeup brushes are common, and the need for cleanliness when using makeup is only beginning to be understood. From fungal infections, skin breakouts, clogged pores, to the horrifying case of Joe Gilchrist. She contracted an aggressive staphylococcus infection from a dirty makeup brush that almost killed her and left her paralyzed. And she's one of many. Dirty makeup brushes pose a real threat to our health. Still, 44% of consumers have never washed their brushes. My name is Bella Reed, founder of Cleanse Cosmetics. Waste, weight, drying times, aversion to chemicals, and time without tools are considerable pain points. These tools come into close contact with eyes, nose, and mouth. Cross infection from COVID-19, Staphylococcus aureus, herpes simplex, pseudomonas, and many more can cause severe infections that are antibiotic resistant or viral. We understand that keeping skin safe is not only a crucial beauty step, but a healthcare necessity. Our patentable innovation in makeup brush design combine redesigned brush heads that allow light and air to penetrate deep into the core of the brush, the hardest part of the brush to access, providing a true chemical-free sterilization process. The brush heads, tools and cosmetics are sterilised between users in a quick drying UVC sterilisation box in 180 seconds. At the end of the day, it deep cleans and dries everything in 20 minutes. No need for scrubbing and inhaling toxic chemicals. Our TRL5 system has been lab tested and proven to kill up to 99.09% .09 of microorganisms, keeping professionals and clients safe from infection and chemical irritation in an environmentally safe manner. We were part of the CRL Hardware Better Futures Plus and University of Cambridge Women in Sustainable Innovation Accelerators. 
developing the system with the Manufacturing Technology Centre to build recycling into the brush, significantly improving sustainability. The removable heads reduce end-of-life la landfill waste and minimise weight per brush by 80%, also eliminating single-use applicators. Designed for makeup artists and everyday regular makeup users as a safe and sustainable solution. Thus, our system tackles both hygiene, health and safety and sustainability issues within the cosmetics industry worth globally $639 billion. Our brushes and cosmetics can be safely and rapidly cleansed and dried whilst minimising the disposable plastic waste, water consumption, use of chemicals, weight of the professional makeup case and cross-contamination. Cleanse is fast, clean and safe. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Bella, for sharing with us. And it's nice to actually see the products. Um, I think uh, a lot of uh, probably ladies on, on the call um, would love the opportunity to try out when it's ready. Now, next one, we are going to um, the next level. Well, next level. No, we are going upstream now. So, Mandeep, um, if you are here with us, please turn on the camera and unmute yourself. And yeah, then very much share screen with us to tell us about Bendy. Great. Hi, everybody. I'm Mandy. Great to be here. I'm one of the co-founders of Bendy, uh, and we help organizations to make their supply chains more responsible. Well, why would you want to do that? Historically, hasn't really been something you needed to do. In fact, you had high profit margins with limited oversight. But the future is quite different. There's a lot of regulation coming in and already quite a lot in place. Um, in fact, one of the reasons I'm personally doing this is my mum worked as a seamstress making clothes by part uh, and then being underpaid for that, less than the minimum wage. And um, yeah, the opportunity to make a tool that helps organisations understand what people are paid, whether that's fair, uh, things like uh, health and safety, and the environmental impacts of their production, um, that's, that's a really big impact that this organization this can make. So of course, we can't do this uh, using the products, legacy products and processes of yesterday because they're manual, they give us very limited access and visibility into the supply chain in a world where there's rising complexity. We've already built uh, something that helps organizations uh, prioritize the tasks that they need to complete related to their supply chain. They've, we've built profiles to see supplier information and also visualize um, different parts uh, of how they link up together. It's a massive, massive market, uh, apparels first, but then we're moving on to other sectors. We've been awarded uh, a grant to do some of this work alongside the University of Leeds as uh, a researcher and a number of companies who want to share their data so that we can help them improve this. And there are lots of other companies already lining up. So we've got a very healthy pipeline. Um, I've been in the world, in the commercial world for over a decade. My co-founder in sustainability uh, and policy and climate change and our third tech co-founder has been building um, you know, a tech for billion dollar companies. So we're doing a 500K pre-seed rounds um, and we've got some of that committed already. And please do get in touch if this is of interest to you. Thank you very much, Mandy, for sharing with us. And yes, um, it's currently fundraising. Quite a few of our staff at the moment are fundraising. So I know there are a few investors on the call. Um, if it's for you, please do reach out and get in touch to get a you know 10 minutes pitch or 30 minutes calls or an hour. And if this is not an innovation for you, but you know you know in your investor group networks that you know some people might be interested, please do feel free to connect them and see if um, we can do the successful matchmaking. That would be wonderful as well. So next we are going back um, to slightly more into the production. Towards the end of the production, there are a lot of waste there. What do we do with it? So now, um, Kate, if you are online with us, please um, yeah, share screen and tell us about Fiber Lab. Hi everyone, my name is Kay. I'm the founder of FiberLab. And in 2016, I moved to New York City and got my first- I just, Sorry, just to, I can, uh, we can all see this, um, 
the messages, the slides. You might you might want to share in a different way. Yes. Thanks. One second. Don't worry. I thought I was extra prepared. So we all know where where K is preparing for it. Um, we all know um, fashion industry is a very wasteful industry, and so I think from not only from the material that need to be improved, um, there are a lot of uh, different ways to help to reduce the waste. Is also equally important. So now let's Can come back to Bible the notes. Or now it's good. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Um, where was I? Yes. So in 2016, I moved to New York City and got my first industry job as a fast fashion designer. It was through this role that I got to see firsthand the unimaginable amounts of textile waste that was generated through the industry. And so often we're told that as consumers, it's our responsibility to change our habits, but the industry is actually responsible for the vast majority of waste and emissions produced. In the UK alone, over 800,000 tons of textile waste are sent to landfill before a garment ever even reaches a consumer. And although solutions do exist today, they currently exist within a fragmented and globalized supply chain, collecting waste in one location and shipping it around the world countless times before potentially becoming a new product or material. At Fiber Lab, we aim to redefine this through our hyper-localized textile shredding and recycling service. We work specifically with pre-consumer and commercial textile waste from the manufacturing process and are able to pre-sort fibers by working with businesses to separate waste at the cutting stage. Our business model is based on holding businesses accountable for the waste that they generate by charging a flat rate of five pounds per kilo. And to do this, we use a custom built small scale mechanical shredding machine to shred down textile waste into a valuable recycled fiber. And although our machine is small, it can process up to 300 kilos of textile waste every single day. After the textiles are shredded into a raw fiber, we can either sell that fiber on to local designers or partner with local businesses to create new materials and products. There we go. Uh, some examples of this include creating fiber-based papers and packaging, filling for cushions and furniture pieces, or even fiber-based bricks for architectural applications. The possibilities are truly endless when you have the capabilities to turn waste back into valuable new raw materials. So please join us in supporting our mission of developing the hyper-localized systems of today for the circular economy of tomorrow. We're looking to raise investment, partner with strategic uh, fashion brands and manufacturers based in the UK, and of course, connect with people who may be in press industry, and we're always welcoming more advisors and volunteers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. And yes, I do like um, um, how you work with the Soho House to, you know, leveraging the waste and turn into the cushions and things so they are able to carry on their lifespan. Great. So now we are coming to <clears throat> the very, not this, the last one, but uh, Mariana. So this is a Cambridge spin out um, exciting um, innovation that we are going to share. So Mariana, if you could, yeah, share the screen and then tell us about the innovation. That would be wonderful. I hope you can see my slide. Yes, great. Great. Hi, uh, my name is Mariana, and I'm one of the founders of Evodalis. Evodalis uh, is an early, st early stage biotech spin out from the University of Cambridge with the vision to enable a sustainable route to recycle textile plastic waste. We apply a ultra high throughput screening platform to find and prove plastic degrading enzymes, enabling the recycling plotters products to be used again in new textile fibers. 353 million tons of global plastic waste are generated at each year, uh, mainly coming from packaging and textile. Only 9% of this plastic waste are recycled. Uh, the current recycling approach produce lower quality products, require large energy or use harsh conditions. A green alternative is the use of enzymes. 
the biodegradation of the polymers by enzymes generate monomers, which can be repolymerized to verge grade materials. Current methods to find uh, enzymes are time consuming or have no functional data. With our, with our high throughput screen platform, 10 million of plastic degrading enzymes can be screened per day, which is a thousand times faster than state of the art. The potential, market of the, the potential market value of recovered monomers from global plastic waste is huge. Our initial focus lies on textiles that can degrade 90% of the plas plastic from textile waste. Uh, for Europe and US, the value of the corresponding monomers would be worth $13 billion. We are currently at the pre-seed pre funding round, seeking for two million investments to develop the most efficient uh, enzymes for PET, polyurethane, 10, uh, pure, and polyamide, that's PA. We are, this is the Vodalis team. We are multidisciplinary with uh, experts in different fields. Uh, if you are interested to get to know more about Veralis, please reach us. Thank you for listening and also for your attention. Thank you very much. This is a very um, high-tech side of uh, re um, research-led, R&D-led um, innovation. So um, please do reach out if you're interested in you know, the plastic recycling parts, um, regardless is in the textile space or other space this might be your potential solutions. So please reach out to Mariana and get a full lens of a, um, kind of a pitch. So you are able to dive in deeper into lab technology and innovation. So now we are coming to almost towards the end of this particular group, but would like to um, give Phoebe another chance to yeah, tell her story. So I think uh, Phoebe, you just called in, right? Hi, right. yeah, I am here now. Oh, okay, great. Oh, you're back. Great. So, Phoebe, I will share slides for you, and just um, as you go along. So, don't worry. You just tell tell us your story, and I will just turn the slides accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Um. So, if you can hop onto the next slide, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Uh, so hi, I'm Phoebe. I'm the founder of Alternate Catch, and this is basically stemmed from my final undergraduate project, where my practice kind of developed into this firm-rooted belief that restoration and community collaboration are vital to the progression of sustainable and harmonious design. I initially wanted to showcase seaweed for something other than what it's commonly known for, and this was then the pigments, and this quickly escalated into a deep dive into the entire industry's infrastructure. Uh, the next slide, please. So our resilient oceans are beginning to fail under the stresses of human activity, having already absorbed over 90% of atmospheric CO2. On top of this, natural color is everywhere, yet the majority of industrial use of color is derived from petrochemical sources. This is why Alternate Catch is establishing new pigment origins with low energy technology that uses zero water. Our approach to sustainability isn't limited to the product output either. We're redefining supply chains by working with fishermen at smaller scales and valorizing waste streams from our extraction processes, which can then lead on to benefit other industries such as agricultural farming and generally supporting the sustainable growth of the industry. Uh, the next slide. So utilizing seaweed pigments, um, the aim is to produce a range of products such as paints and ink. And on top of this, we're collaborating with existing fashion uh, brands and companies to support their transition into more sustainable practices. And then the next slide. So the benefits of seaweed and pigment production from seaweed is that there's a drawdown of carbon capture and we're using zero water. There's a support of the marine ecosystems and farming seaweed actually aids to protecting the coastline. Uh, the next slide. So, so far I've extracted over five pigments from just one species of seaweed and there are over 600 of species of seaweed in the UK alone and then more than 12,000 worldwide. So it's safe to say I've barely scratched at the surface with the potential of pigment production from seaweed. Uh, the next slide. Finally, please join me on my mission to make sustainability as vibrant and inclusive as possible. 
And on the next slide is a QR code to my video, which will probably explain this a lot more as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm just going to leave this slide here for another 10 seconds. So people who are trying to, yeah, use your phone to get the link, then you should be able to get that. Right. So now I will stop sharing. So he, those are the seven uh, businesses in the innovation for uh, fashion and beauty.